in the space of just a few short days, life savings were completely wiped out as the Terra Luna ecosystem was absolutely annihilated. People lost millions, and then others of us were sitting here on the sidelines scratching our heads thinking, aren't stable coins supposed to be stable? If you're as confused by all of this as I am, then you'll want to stay tuned for this video because we are taking a deep dive into stable coins, how they work, how they're different, and most importantly, what this means for you. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and in today's video, we are going to be taking a deep dive into stable coins, what they are, why they exist in the cryptocurrency ecosystem, how they're different, and what this means for you. Now, before we get started, we've got to address the big issue here, which is the absolute meltdown and annihilation of the Terra Luna ecosystem, the crash of the UST stablecoin. Obviously, that's probably how most of you got to this video. However, this video isn't going to be a post-mortem analysis of UST, of Luna, uh, because you know here on my channel, I can't really talk too much about any specific coins. But what I can do is, number one, explain what stable coins are, what they're used for in the cryptocurrency world, and then most importantly, explain how different types of stable coins differ from each other and the various risks associated with them so that you can be more informed. So first off, what even is a stable coin? A stable coin is a cryptocurrency designed to hold a value. Generally speaking, this is pegged to the value of one US dollar, but other types of stable coins exist. There are stable coins that are pegged to gold or to euros, uh, a couple other ones out there, but in general, we think stable coins are pegged to the dollar or some kind of fiat on a one to one basis. So, why would we deliberately invest in something that is going to have a one to one? dollar ratio wouldn't it be better to just keep our cash in the bank where it's got that fdic protection well stable coins actually fulfill a number of important roles within the cryptocurrency ecosystem first and foremost they allow us to send a dollar denominated instrument anywhere in the world maybe even to a country that doesn't use dollars or where sending a wire wouldn't be possible but beyond that, they serve an important role in trading pairs on cryptocurrency exchanges. If you go to any cryptocurrency exchange, what you'll most likely find is that stable coins have the most trading pairs. For example, basically any cryptocurrency that I want to buy on an exchange, I can buy with a stable coin. Any crypto that I want to sell, I can sell for a stable coin. By contrast, I might not be able to sell between Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. I might not be able to do an, a direct exchange. I might have to go from Litecoin to Tether and then from Tether to Bitcoin Cash. So stable coins serve an important role as intermediaries in some of these transactions. Stable coins are also a form of dry powder. Now, what do I mean by dry powder? It, even if you're completely new to the stock market, you've probably heard the phrase, buy low, sell high. It's the exact same concept in cryptocurrency, but we have to do things a little bit differently because we can't just have money in our bank and instantly buy crypto as soon as the price drops. We would have to take it from our bank, convert it to an exchange, let it settle on the exchange, convert to a stable coin, go through and process that trade. It would take valuable time. On the flip side, we also couldn't, let's suppose we were trying to get Ethereum and we're waiting on the price of Ethereum to go down and we're saying, as soon as Ethereum goes down, I will trade my Bitcoin for Ethereum. In theory, that sounds good. However, assets in the cryptocurrency market are very often highly correlated. So if Ethereum is down, it's likely that Bitcoin will, go, will be down as well. So yes, we might be buying that Ethereum low, but we're also selling our Bitcoin low. So what keeping stable coins allows us to do is maintain a stable value. So let's say $100 as Ethereum drops, as Bitcoin drops, well, we are still buying $100 worth of that coin, but we're getting a larger quantity because we waited for the price to go down. Similarly, when we are cashing out of a cryptocurrency, we're selling high, we are selling into a stable value position. And then lastly, stable coins are critically important in the space of DeFi lending or really any kind of crypto lending. If I issue a one Bitcoin loan to my friend, 
Right now, Bitcoin is ballpark $30,000. Well, a year from now, if Bitcoin drops to $15,000, I have lost $15,000 on that loan, even though I'm getting back one Bitcoin. On the flip side, if I take out a loan that's valued at one Bitcoin and a year from now it goes up to $60,000, well, I'm still repaying one Bitcoin, but the value of that Bitcoin has doubled. So pretty expensive loan there. So lending in stable coins allows both the borrower and the lender to know how much they will get from the transaction. So with all of these important roles for stable coins, it's no surprise that different companies, different organizations have all issued their own types of stable coins trying to get into the market. Now, if you just look at stable coins, you're likely to see that the price is a dollar and you're thinking they're all the same. They all do the same thing. But in reality, the way in which these coins maintain their dollar peg is different and very important to understand. In general, there's three ways of doing this. Fiat-backed stable coins, crypto collateralized stable coins, and algorithmically controlled stable coins. Let's start with the most intuitive and generally the most widely used, which is fiat collateralized stable coins. With these, there is, and I'm speaking generally, there is one coin issued for $1. So I put $1 into a bank account somewhere and Circle issues one USDC coin. I put $1 with uh, Gemini, they issue one Gemini stable coin, right? The idea is that each coin is basically just a cryptocurrency representation of a dollar that is held in an account somewhere. Now, we get into the weeds a little bit when we talk about some like Tether, that maybe they do have a dollar, maybe they don't have a dollar, maybe they have short-term debt instead of a dollar. But in general, this is a beginner-level video, when you think of a fiat collateralized stablecoin, I want you to think this is a stablecoin that has a dollar out there somewhere. That's a very good beginner level intro to that. Now, the cool thing about this is that let's suppose the price for whatever reason of USDC, it doesn't stay at a dollar. It goes down to 95 cents. I can actually redeem this stable coin for a dollar. So think about Bitcoin. If I buy Bitcoin at 60,000, it goes to 30,000. I've got to sell that Bitcoin at whatever the market price is. I can't take it back to anyone and say, you know, I'm not a fan of this Bitcoin. Give me my money back. By contrast, with these stable coins that are redeemable, the price doesn't matter so much as the fact that we can, hey, price of USDC went down, give me my money back, right? Because it is one-to-one -one backed. And again, this is the theory. We'll talk a little bit about the caveats later, but for now, just understand the theory. Crypto collateralized stable coins, by contrast, do not have dollars in a bank account somewhere. Rather, what they have is crypto in an account somewhere. So. I don't have a dollar in a bank account, but maybe I've got a dollar fifty worth of Bitcoin. I've got a dollar fifty worth of Ethereum. So what cl crypto collateralized stable coins like Dai will do is they will issue one Dai, but there will be a dollar fifty worth of crypto backing it somewhere. The idea here is that the price of that asset, the Dai stable coin, it can go up, it can go down just a little bit, but if it starts deviating too much, there's incentives to keep it in line. Worst case scenario, something happens to the price of DAI, I always know that there's that collateral that I can go back, I can get that collateral, and then I can sell it to, um, and I'm gonna have more than the value of a dollar. So there's something backing it, something outside of DAI. It's not dollars, but it's crypto that's valued at greater than a dollar. We typically call that over collateralization. Lastly, we've got algorithmic stablecoins. Now, this is what UST, this is what the Terra Luna ecosystem was built off. In contrast to crypto collateralized and fiat collateralized, there is nothing in a bank account somewhere backing this. There's no dollars, there's no crypto. Rather, this relies on supply and demand. So if it's generally a pair between two assets. So in the example of Terra Luna ecosystem, we had uh, Luna, which was the crypto itself, and then we had the UST stablecoin. The idea was if UST starts going up in price, well, what people will do is if it's going up in price, they're going to use the supply and demand to basically adjust it and bring it back. If it starts going down in price, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it back up. And in theory, that works good. However, what we see is that it can break down. So when everything is working well, let's just suppose that the price of UST 
or any algorithmically backed stablecoin starts to go up, people will sell the corresponding asset, right? So in this case, it was Luna. They would sell their Luna. They would create more UST. Well, what do we know about supply and demand? If there's more supply, price goes down. So the stablecoin, it's getting above a dollar. We don't want that. We want it to stay at a dollar. So people start selling a crypto, making more of this, so the price should go down. On the flip side, the price starts going down. People start, what do they do? They start buying more of it. This drives supply lower, brings the price back up in theory. However, what we saw is that the dynamic between UST and Luna is important. If no one wants to exchange the Luna or UST when the prices are out of bounds, then the stability of the entire system is at risk. And it's kind of a negative feedback loop. When that stable coin isn't worth a dollar, then the value of the Luna coin becomes less attractive to hold as well. So when we think of algorithmic stable coins, it's, it's a relationship between two coins. There's really nothing backing it. Um, as you can see here, the price dropped from about a dollar to around 14 cents in the matter of just a few days. Now, if you're listening to this video and it's your first time really hearing about crypto, you're probably thinking, this algorithmic stablecoin is a joke. Why would anyone want to invest in it? You're probably thinking, well, these fiat-backed coins, they're the best. They've literally got a dollar backing them up. But the point that I want to make here is that there's really no one right answer. I can't tell you that this one is better or that that one's worse. What I can tell you is that it depends on what risks you're willing to assume. Each of these has a different risk profile. And that's my job to explain and help educate. For example, the fiat-backed coins, you're probably thinking, this is awesome. They've got a dollar in the bank somewhere. Anything happens, I can just go get my dollar. Couple issues with that. Number one, they're not FDIC insured. So you don't really know. Maybe these companies, again, I'm not saying that they do, but let's just imagine. Could Circle, that issues USDC, could they maybe not actually have all those dollars in the bank account? It's possible. Maybe they're just creating coins and saying there's dollars in a bank account, right? Um, I don't necessarily think that's likely, but it is a possibility. Also, with it being uh, centralized, there's been issues in the past where companies have come out and admitted and said, hey, uh, we have control of these coins. We can shut them down if we want to. We can freeze your transactions if we want to. We've built these back doors into them. So um, in one circumstance, you might be safer. In another, you are assuming some other risks. With the crypto-backed stablecoins, you're thinking, okay, these are cool, they're backed by cryptocurrency, so they are more decentralized, but that peg might be a little bit off. Maybe it doesn't stay exactly at a dollar. Maybe I can't redeem it directly for dollars. I've got to get this collateral and I've got to go through this exchange process a little bit. Definitely more complicated in my opinion. And then with the algorithmic stablecoins, it's easy to look at UST and Luna and say, they're absolute garbage. Why would anyone invest in it? But you have to remember that just a couple of weeks ago, big, big names in cryptocurrency were singing the praises of this. It was a top three stablecoin, right? It was widely heralded as a an incredible innovation because it relied on supply and demand. It was decentralized. In theory, right, it was designed to work well. So big point I'm trying to make is that Regardless of what type of stablecoin you use, it's important to understand that they do have different risk profiles. There's no asset that is entirely risk-free, right? And that's not financial advice. That's just a common sense statement that you're going to assume certain risk with different assets. It's important to know what those risks are and if you're comfortable accepting those risks versus some other risk. Uh, a couple other lessons there too. Number one, there's no such thing as too big to fail in crypto. Like I said, this was a top three stablecoin, a top 10 crypto overall, and in the space of just a few days, it lost massive, massive amounts of value. There was no Federal Reserve to step in. There was no bailout. There was no government. It just crashed and burned, and the people that were affected by this don't really have a lot that they can do other than sit there and accept their losses. Also, crypto moves fast. The stock market, if you follow it, has been in a downtrend lately, but it goes down a percent, two percent, three percent per day. If it goes down five percent in a day, it's a huge deal. The president's going to be on TV talking about it. The Federal Reserve is going to come out and release a statement, right? Um, but in crypto, just a few days, the market cap of this coin has virtually went in the gutter. The entire ecosystem is in shambles, and again, there's no one that stepped in to stop it. It just crashed. So, as always. Speaking of things crashing, this is an educational and informative video. I like to use it to 
share teaching points really, not to tell you this crypto is good or that one's bad, but to explain the differences between them and then allow you to make the decisions um, based on that understanding and doing your own research. So as always, I would like to thank you for watching. I do appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you next time.